Hello everyone, we have here a given exponential equation. 27 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x equals 130. And in here, we'll be solving for the real values of x. And so in this video, I'll be presenting three ways to solve the equation. Alright, so let's do it. So here is the first method. 27 can be written in the same way as 3 cubed to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x equals 130. The first term can be written in the same way as 3 to the power of x cubed plus 3 to the power of x equals 130. And the left term of the equation can be written in the same way as 3 raised to the power of 3x. This is from the formula a raised to m raised to n equals a raised to n raised to m or is equal to a raised to m times n or exactly the same way as a raised to n times m. We ended up multiplying the exponent. So let's just finish writing the equation. So plus 3 to the power of x equals 130. Now in here, factor out 3 to the power of x. So 3 to the power of x times we have, we're factoring out x out of 3x. So that is 3 to the power of 2x. And then plus factoring out 3 to the power of x becomes 1 and is equal to. And here, got the constant on the right. 130 can be written as 26 times 5. So the factors of 130 are 26 and 5. So in here, in splitting the exponent, we use another exponent formula. That is a raised to m times a raised to n is equal to a raised to m plus n. And so now uh, back to our equation. If you know this, these two factors right here, 3 to the power of x and 3 to the power of 2x plus 1, and the factors of 130 on the right side, this part right here, an odd factor. So this is an odd factor. And 5 is an odd factor likewise and the same on this one right here since we have a one on here this just means that this is an even factor so an even and 26 is an even factor also and so from here we'll be equating those odd factors likewise on here even to even and one more thing to notice is that this factor is greater than this one right here. And 26 is greater than 5. So we equate this both. And likewise, these odd factors. From here now, 3 to the power of x, the odd factor, is equal to the odd factor, that is 5. And the other side, 3 to the power of 2x plus 1, an even factor is equal to an even factor on the right side. That's 26. Solving for the value of x on here, we're using the natural logarithm or common logarithm. It doesn't matter. So we have here now natural logarithm. So we have here, take the natural logarithm on both sides of the equation. ln of 3 to the power of x, so ln of 5. So take down the exponent x as a coefficient. So x times ln of 3 equals ln of 5. Isolating the variable x, so we divide the whole equation with ln of 3. And this now cancels. So we have here now value of x is equal to ln of 5 divided by ln of 3. As the value of x. On the other side, simplify this equation. So we have 3 to the power of 2x equals, transposing 1 to the other side, become 
26 minus 1, that is 25. So 3 to the power of 2x equals 25. Once again, taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation, we have natural logarithm of 3 to the power of 2x equals natural logarithm of 25. Taking down the exponent as a coefficient, 2x times natural logarithm of 3 equals natural logarithm of 25. Isolating the variable x, that means we're dividing both sides with 2 ln of 3. So 2 ln of 3. So this one cancels. 2 cancel. Value of x is equal to ln 25 divided by 2 ln of 3 or the same way ln of 25 divided by ln of 3 squared. That's the value of x. And in here the value of x uh, by using our calculator we take the numerical value of x that is approximately 1.46497. That's the value of x. And likewise on here the value of x ln of 5 divided by ln of 3 is equal to 1.46497. That's the same answer as the, as the other one. So these answers are both the same. 1.46497, the same thing on here. All right, so now let's go to the second method. Here, our second method, I have written the uh, original equation again and converted the, 27, the base of 27 into base 3 with its equivalent uh, exponent of x right there and this is uh, converted as exponent 3 uh, so, uh, raised to the third power so from here we're doing substitution so we're defining another val variable to represent 3 to the power of x so that is now let y be 3 to the power of x and the equation now is converted to y cubed plus 3 to the power x is y equal to 130. And in here, in this second method, we'll be getting the value of y by trial and error by plugging in the actual number, assigning a number to a variable y to make it as sum of 130. So let's try 2. If you put 2 over here, 2 cubed, that will be 8, plus 2, you wouldn't do it. So what we do, we go up, so 3, or let's say 4. 4 cubed is 64, plus 4, it's only 68. So if we uh, put 5, so that's 5 cubed, plus 5, is, is that equal to 130? That's 5 cubed, that is 125. And plus 5, so that is equal to exactly 130. So that's how we find the value of y. So y, therefore, is 5. And now let's recall that uh, y is just a substituted variable in place of 3 to the power of x. So we have here now 3 to the power of x is equal to 5. And we're taking the uh, natural logarithm on both sides of the equation. So we have now ln of 3 to the power of x equals ln of 5 taking down x as coefficient we have here now x times ln of 3 equals ln of 5 and solving for the value of x x therefore is equal to ln of 5 divided by ln of 3 so that's the value of x and if you notice we have arrived at the same answer as the first method from earlier ln of 5 divided by ln of 3. Now, let's go to the third method. Now, on the third method, we start at the point where we simplify the equation and we let the new variable substitute variable y in place of 3 to the power of x. And from this uh, equation, we use we will be using this uh, on the third method. So that is our equation now here is y cubed plus y and transposing the uh, 130 on the right side to the left side of the equation. 
So that is minus 130 equals 0. And we have here substitution of the value of y, a new variable, in place of 3 to the power of x. That was this from earlier. So in here, in this third method, we'll be tweaking the value of the middle term. So we have here now y cubed plus y minus 130 equals 0. And substituting the value of y as, let's use y as negative 25y plus 26y. And in here the equation now becomes y cubed minus 25y plus 26y minus 130 equals 0. And from here, we're using the factoring by grouping. All right, so we can factor out y. Actually, y is missing over here, so put y on there. So factoring out y, so this is now y times the quantity, y squared minus 25 can be written as 5 squared plus factoring of 26. So we have y minus 130 divided by 26 is 5 equals 0. And now from here, if you notice, uh, this is a popular identity in algebra. The difference of the squares, this can be represented as a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times the quantity a minus b. So we'll be using this as factors out of this uh, difference of the squares. All right. So we have here the difference of the squares and the equivalent uh, factors on here. And we have a is y and b is 5. And we have here our equation, y times the quantity, y squared minus 5 squared, close parenthesis, plus 26 times, y minus 5 equals 0. So we have here the difference of the squares. We're using this formula, identity in algebra. So we have here now y times the quantity. The equivalent of this uh, difference of the squares is this one right here. So we have here now a plus b, that is a is y, so plus b, b is 5, so y plus 5 times the quantity y minus 5, that's a minus b. So in here now plus 26 times the quantity y minus 5 equals 0. So from here we can factor out y minus 5, so we have here now y minus 5 times the quantity, times this, that is y squared plus 5y and plus 26 equals 0. From here now, we can equate this factor, y minus 5 equals 0. So from here, y is equal to 5. That's the value of y. And the other side, we have here quadratic form or trinomial in quadratic form. That is y squared plus 5y plus 26 equals 0. Now we can determine the value of y by using quadratic formula. And by the way, we'll be using the, the discriminant to identify if we have the real root of y in this, in this uh, kind of equation. So we have the discriminant delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So where b is the coefficient of the second term, that is, this is b is 5 and this is c is 26, and a is the coefficient of y squared, so that is 1 here. So b squared, that's 5 squared, so 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times a is 1, and c is 26 times 26. So we see this is equal to 25 minus the 104. And the discriminant now is equal to 25 minus 104. So this must be negative 79. So this is smaller than 0. 
What does it mean by that? Uh, discriminant is smaller than zero. That means we had no real solution on this. So in here we have the value of y as 5. All right, so we'll be using this value. And from here, let's recall that y is a substituted value, substituted variable, I should say. That is y is equal to 3 to the power of x. From here now, 3 to the power of x is equal to y, and y is 5. So from here, taking the natural logarithm, ln of 3 to the power of x is equal to ln of 5. As usual, taking down exponent x as coefficient, so x ln of 3 equals ln of 5, and x is equal to ln of 5 divided by ln of 3. So we have the same answer as the first two methods. So this just confirms that our value of x is correct. Natural logarithm of 5 divided by natural logarithm of 3. So that's our final answer. So if you notice on all three methods, first, second, and third method, we arrive at the same answer. And we have here ln of 5 divided by ln of 3. Second method, same way. All right. And so this is all for now. And for those new to my channel, I would appreciate it if you can hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting and informative videos. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.